Great, so my name's Holly Wu and I'm a PhD student at The Open University studying the impact of urbanisation on ancient woodland. And today I'd like to briefly introduce my project and some of the work I've been doing uh, using historic data to identify changes in the flora of ancient woodlands that are near areas of recent urban development. Does that move? Um, so ancient woodland has been defined as land that's been continuously covered with forest since 1600. It has a rich flora, including ancient woodland indicator species. Today, this type of woodland covers around 2.5% of the land area of the UK. Although ancient woodlands are protected in the planning process, as towns and cities expand into surrounding countryside, land adjacent to ancient woodlands is more likely to become dominated by human land uses. Woodlands can become islands within an urban matrix, and in this context, they may, may be affected by factors such as increased visitor pressure, pollution, habitat fragmentation, invasive species, changing hydrology and microclimate, and changes in habitat management. By comparing the land cover maps, uh, by comparing land cover maps with data from the ancient woodland inventory, I found that just over 10% of the UK's ancient woodland is within 100 metres of urban fabric, with 1.8% being near a major town or city. My research focuses on Milton Keynes, where development of this new town has led to a rapid transition from a largely, uh, largely rural to an urban landscape over the last 50 years. Three large patches of ancient woodland, Howe Park Wood, Shenley Wood and Linford Wood, are now managed by the Parks Trust as areas for biodiversity and recreation in Milton Keynes. Four woodlands in more rural areas, Little Linford Wood, Hollington Wood, College Wood and Solden Wood, were identified as suitable comparator sites for the Milton Keynes, Wood, Milton Keynes woodlands based on size and soil type. By, by comparing the flora of these urban and rural woodlands, I hope to understand whether urbanisation has affected the communities of woodland plants. I've collated data from Buckinghamshire and Milton Keynes Environmental Record Centre, NVN and historic survey reports to produce a data set of plants recorded within one kilometre of these target woodlands. Most of the records were collected between the 1960s and 2019, which is the time period in which Milton Keynes developed from a series of rural, rural villages into a large urban area. I'm analysing the data to examine differences in the composition of plant communities of the urban and rural woodlands. Initial results indicate that of the 586 species recorded within the target woodlands, 146 species were found only in the urban woodlands, and 38% of these were non-native species, which is nearly twice the proportion of non-native species found in the rural woodlands, and over four times as many as the proportion of non-natives in both urban and rural woodlands. By dividing the data into records collected before and after 1990, we could see whether the species composition of rural and urban woodlands has changed since the development of major grid roads, industrial and residential areas in Milton Keynes. The proportion of ancient woodland indicators in the species list for all three urban woodlands has declined since 1990, while the proportion of ancient woodland indicators in the species lists for the rural woodlands has increased, that is for most of them, apart from College Wood, which is a rural plantation on an ancient woodland site, now in the process of restoration. The proportion of introduced non-native species in Linford Wood and Shenley Wood in Milton Keynes has doubled since 1990, while those in Howe Park Wood in Milton Keynes and all of the rural woodlands has declined slightly or remained low. One minute, Holly, good. Last slide. Um, in conclusion, a significant proportion of ancient woodland in the UK is near urban areas and are likely to be affected by the impacts of urbanisation. By collating species records from urban woodlands in Milton Keynes and rural comparator sites, I've been able to observe trends in the proportion of indicator and non-native species. Initial results indicate that many non-native species are found only in urban woodlands, and this may be due to the introduction and naturalisation of species from urban gardens. As with all record data, reporting rates present a challenge to interpretation, so I'll be addressing this in future analyses. I also plan to use records with more precise localities to see if the woodland edges, paths and rides are more vulnerable to urban pressures. 
I'm grateful to the Parks Trust, BMERC and NBN for supporting this research and for, for providing historic data. Please do get in touch if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.